Hey, Freedom Fighters, my name is Rob Berger. In this video, I'm gonna walk through a free investment tracking spreadsheet. It's extremely easy to use. It'll help you track your investments. And as you'll see, it's a great tool when it comes to rebalancing your portfolio. Now, if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe below and let's get to it. So here's the spreadsheet. I actually first wrote about it, I think back in 2014 on my site, doorroller.net, uh, personal finance site I, I founded in 07, actually sold it a couple of years ago. It's still in good hands. In fact, if you, if you Google investment tracking spreadsheet, I think this article uh, is the first to appear in Google, but you can find a copy of it here at doorroller.net. I'll also leave a link to it um, in the in the discussions below this video. Now, uh, it's only got two sheets, the one you see here and one I call holdings. We'll be looking at both of them. Before you start though, this is so important, you see this note in red, please do not request access to this spreadsheet, instead make a copy. Anyway, all you do is go to file, make a copy, name it whatever you want to name it, and you're good to go. So what's the first step? It's a simple spreadsheet, but there's a lot of complexity underneath the hood. Uh, so let's, let's begin with the holdings page. This is where you should start. Now, the, the data that I have in here is just uh, demo data. This is not my actual portfolio, although I do own many of the mutual funds that are, are listed here. But this is where you start and you want to enter your portfolio. And you could include mutual funds, ETFs, stocks, uh, whatever you'd like. Now, what I've done here, as you can see, is color-coded certain cells. Those are the cells where you need to enter information. All of the other cells get calculated uh, or filled in automatically. So let me just show you how that works. Take this cell, for example. If we click on it, you can see we use a function. It's the Google Finance function. It references cell B3, which is the ticker symbol, and then pulls in the name for that fund. So when you enter a, a symbol for a mutual fund or ETF, it should pull in the name of that fund automatically. Now for each fund, we want to give it a category. And as you can see from the drop down, I have five categories. You can change this. You can be more specific. You could, for example, have a category for REITs, real estate investment trusts, or you could have a category for emerging markets or for perhaps small caps or small cap value, whatever you'd, whatever you'd like. And the way you do that is if you simply right click on this cell, you'll see data validation. And that's where you'll see a list of the drop down items. Now, if you want to change it for the entire column, you could just highlight the whole thing, do the same thing, right click on it. And we could add, for example, uh, REITs and let's add emerging markets. And then when we see the drop down, you'll see that they get added. For now, for this demo, we'll just keep uh, the categories that we have. Then you enter the number of shares that you own for the particular investment. Price, as you see, gets calculated with the Google Finance function as well, again using this ticker symbol. Um, value is just a, a simple mathematical evaluation of the shares and the price. Portfolio, again, is again just a simple mathematical calculation. Um, fund expense ratio, again, uses Google Finance. And then the weighted expense ratio is just a simple formula. So what you can do is um, actually just overwrite each of these rows with each of your investments. You'll notice I organize them by account, which means you could have the same investment multiple times on the spreadsheet. So we have in this example, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index is here in a, in a rollover R IRA but it's also here in a Roth IRA and it's even here in a 401k. Now, you may have more investments and you may need to add more rows. It's easy to do, but there are a few things to keep in mind. So let's actually add one now. We'll call it, uh, let's just say you have a 403B. And uh, we'll throw some emerging market in, that's VMA. X, and you'll notice nothing happens in the next cell. So just go to the cell above it, control C to copy, control V to paste. And what it's actually pasting in there is the Google Finance function that we looked at a minute ago, but this time it's using this ticker symbol, 
And so it brings in the name of that fund. We could call it emerging markets uh, since that's really what it is. But for reasons you'll see in a minute, I'm just going to stick with the international stocks designation. And we'll assume, well, we'll assume you've owned a thousand shares. And again, here, the price, we can just copy from the cell above. And it brings in the price. Uh, the value, we can copy from above. Same with the rest. Now, this one's going to return an error. I'll explain that in a minute. 14 basis points is the fund expense ratio. And then the weighted average will return an error as well. So here's what's going on here. You'll notice that it uses holding value and total value. The problem is holding value, as you can see, is, is orange. And it, it doesn't include the, the, the row we just added. So how do we add it to this holding value? Well, if we double click here, we can see it again. And again, we can see that it doesn't include that last row. It's easy to add. If we go to uh, data and name ranges, we'll see all the name ranges that are used in this spreadsheet. We can find holding value here. Just click the pencil icon to edit it. And we want to include row 16. When we do that, our total goes up. We can see that holding value now includes the last row. And this now has a value represents 5% of the portfolio. Now for this one, the issue is portfolio percent, which is this column in purple, again, doesn't include the last row. So we can come over here, find portfolio percent, click the uh, pencil icon, add the last row, and it fills in the information. So what I would recommend if you have more investments than the rows that are on the spreadsheet, go ahead and add them all as I just did. And then you can go in once you're done and change the, the, the value for holding value and portfolio percentage. I should add, and in fact, we're going to do just one more real quick. This works just fine with um, individual stocks. So let's imagine you have a taxable account and you own shares of, oh, we'll say Citibank. It should bring in the name of the company. We can call that although it's an international company, I would call it US stock since it's headquartered in the US. Let's assume you have, uh, we'll say 2000 shares. Bring in the price, we're just again copying and pasting. Oops. Oh, it doesn't have a fund expense ratio. So for, for something that doesn't have a fund expense ratio uh, or it's not loading correctly, you can just uh, put it in by hand. This one, obviously, since it's an individual stock, doesn't have an expense ratio. So we can just put in 0, 0.00. And you'll notice this one here is in yellow because the Google Finance function was not pulling in uh, the expense ratio for VTI. So I just looked it up and put it in by hand. You can do that with any of these fields if for some reason the Google Finance uh, function is not working. And then here we see again our two value errors. So we can come over as we did a minute ago, change these to add the row 17, which we just added, and now it all works. So I'm gonna delete these two, if I can, here we go. So it's back to the original portfolio. So here's the deal, once you have all of your investments uh, uh, into the holdings uh, uh, sheet, and you've adjusted the holding value, and the per, uh, portfolio percent, we can then now go to the asset class tab. And this is kind of where the magic happens. There's a lot going on here and I want to walk through it for you. Um, what we've done is, uh, this is the, the target asset allocation that we're using in the spreadsheet. Now, obviously what you'll want to do is put in your own target uh, asset allocation. If you add other categories like REITs or emerging markets, you'll want to simply add rows to add those here. Uh, what we've got here, Rick Ferry and Personal Capital. Rick Ferry is a good friend of mine, uh, a, a, a financial advisor. He's written some great books, including all about asset allocation, a book I highly recommend, particularly if you're new to investing. This was his uh, recommended portfolio going back all five or six years ago. He may have changed it since then. Um, same thing with Personal Capital. Again, they may have changed what they're recommending. But take all of this with a grain of salt. The best asset allocation for you is going to depend on your age, 
uh, your debt, uh, your investment goals, how close you are to retirement. So this was just to give folks a, a general idea. Same is true with this target uh, asset allocation. I can tell you, for example, that this does not represent my current asset allocation. The point isn't that any of these numbers are correct. It's just to give you an idea of how the spreadsheet works. What you'll want to do is put in your asset allocation in this column. Now, we'll leave it where it is for now, um, but I, I will show you some things about it. So once you have that in here, this is a calculated number. We can open it up and see it's a calculated number in part based on all of the data we entered into the holdings spreadsheet. And here's what it shows us. It shows us our actual allocation. Again, if we go back to the holdings tab, all it's really doing is, in this case, picking up all of the investments that we've labeled as U.S. stocks, totaling them here, and then simply doing the math based on the total value of our portfolio. So what it says is, for all of the investments that we've labeled U.S. stocks on our holdings page, they total $390,000, and that represents about 71% of our total, total portfolio value. Now, the next thing it does is it shows us the difference, the difference between our actual uh, portfolio value and what our target was. So, for example, if we changed our target to 65%, this number changes. I'll put it back. Now, uh, and it does that for each asset class. Now, you'll notice that some of these cells are red and one of them's white. Why is that? Well, what this does is it takes the difference and it compares it to a threshold. And if it's more than the threshold, so if, it's, if the difference is greater than 5% in this case, it turns the cell red just as a way to, to tell us, hey, this asset allocation, it's, it's because the market has changed. It's, it's gone beyond our threshold. In fact, if we made this threshold 17%, it would turn this white. Now, 17% is much higher than I would ever use. Um, I generally like the thresholds that are here. Sometimes I'll make them, as you can see, um, smaller if I'm dealing with an asset class that has a much lower allocation uh, in my portfolio. Again, though, there's no right or wrong here. Your thresholds could be different. And, and understand, too, that in the spreadsheet, the only significance of the threshold is that once an asset class exceeds that threshold, it turns this cell red. That's the only thing it does. Of course, it doesn't rebalance your portfolio. Now that's up to you. So how would we use this to actually rebalance our portfolio? So to rebalance our portfolio, I actually find it helpful to make a change to this spreadsheet. I'm gonna do that now for you when you um, by the time you see the link in the spreadsheet, you will see this column. I'm going to build it right now. And I just call the column rebalance. I'm going to copy the formatting. And this will just call amount. And all I'm going to do is multiply the 16.19% times the total portfolio value so that I know how much of, in this case, U.S. stock mutual funds I need to sell to bring the actual allocation back in line with the target. So to do that, we can just take our total portfolio times this difference. And then we just need to make sure it's in dollars. And there we go. Now we can copy this on down for each of them. To do that, let's make sure that this number always references the same cell. So now when we copy, whoops, there we go. Now when we copy it, it should work. There we are. Now if we actually totaled these, they should equal zero. And we see down here the sum is zero. So the idea is if we took uh, and sold out of our U.S. stock mutual funds $88,000, and then we took 56 of that and invested it in, in, our, in our international stock mutual fund, 19,000 in our alternatives, in this case REITs, uh, 20, almost 2,300 into our bond fund. If we wanted to rebalance this one, it's not off by much, but why not? And then we could keep just about $11,000 of it in cash. And it's really that simple. I hope you find that investment tracking spreadsheet to be useful in your own investing journey. And if you have any questions, just leave, uh, leave them in the comments below. I will be responding to them. And remember, you can get links to the free spreadsheet in the discussion below. Until next time, remember, 
the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.